morning guys it's about 6 a.m got the uh dragon dragon's breath burning cherry red it's probably 70 degrees in the garage i've had it on for about 10 minutes but it's about 20 degrees outside got to uh do an unboxing this morning so i guess we'll get started with that before i open this box i want to let you guys know this cost me about a hundred bucks shipped and it was a gamble so it's a hundred bucks that I'll probably never get back if it doesn't work but to me I felt it was worth the gamble so I'm gonna open it up show you what it is and then we'll talk about the process I'm gonna use to try and get these to work Before I open these up here, I want to show you guys the part number. Make sure you guys, you know, if you need to pause it or whatever to get that part number written down, go ahead and do that. Like I said, not sure if this is going to work, but we're going to give it a shot. These came up on eBay. There was quite a few of them left and they got sold out all at once. Uh, once I posted it to the LMTV Facebook page. So, with that being said, let's open one up and take a look at it. It's a Monroe shock. These are made for an MRAP. The compressed length is about 20 inches, which means the extended length should be around, I don't know, 30? I'm guessing. So I guess the first thing we got to do is get a shock off of Abel, and then I'm going to lay them side by side and show you the differences if there are any. The one thing I do like is that these bushings have a lot of meat on them so if we need to run the larger bolt through there I should be able to machine those out but like I said I don't know what we're up against so the first thing I got to do is I got to get a shock off of Abel to compare it to these so let's get started on that
get those off of there those bolts have probably been on there for over 20 years so got them both off the vehicle let's get a tape measure and a caliper and uh, start taking some measurements and we'll see what we need to do to get this on the truck
they should be at the shortest length. So here it is sitting next to one that's fully compressed. Actually, it looks like the Monroe will compress more, which doesn't surprise me since it's an inch and a half difference in length. This is good. This means there's more range of motion. So 20 and a half on the OEM, center to center. under 19 so yeah inch and a half difference is that going to make a world of difference when these trucks never articulate to full maximum extension on these i don't think so i think that these struts are going to be good to go the other thing you could do is you could go to tractor supply get it get a bolt that's the same length but the same size as the top and then put a bushing uh, on the truck side, they sell bushings at Tractor Supply Company to reduce. It's a reducing bushing. It's like a sleeve. I bet you anything will work. I saw them yesterday when I was there. So that's another option. So for now, I think the easiest route for me is going to be to reuse the factory bolt and just make this bushing at the bottom a little bit, the hole just a little bit larger, and I think it's going to be good to go. So let's get started on that. anymore I had to go to everybody's favorite store and pick up some stuff I'll show you guys what I got when I got when I get back home but I got stuck in traffic for an hour and a half because there was an accident on the bridge on the way over here so heading home now all right let me show you guys what I picked up got a uh, drill bit set the most the one I'm most interested in is 13 16 so I think that's the perfect size drill bit to drill holes in these uh, bushings. Also got an adapter, a couple of adapter sets for um, the torque multiplier come in handy. And then I bought the wrong size socket. I should have bought a 30, but for some reason I bought a 32. I don't know what I was thinking, but whatever. It was only $3, so I don't really care. Uh, let's continue this charade. I already got one of them reinstalled, and I'm working on getting the other one off right now.
the first side done on the front. You'll need uh, about four washers to make up for that extra 3 8 inch that's on the bottom, the little space. I just happened to have some sitting around, so I just added those in there to just to shim it out. Um, so yeah, you have to drill a 13 16 hole and then add four washers. Only on the front. The rears, you know, you can sandwich everything, but on the front they've got this little U or C clip thing on the bottom of the suspension. So, gonna do the other side. This is going awesome. Best hundred dollar gamble I've ever done. are uh, pretty loosey-goosey on a couple of them so probably bad I'm still uh, in disbelief that the only thing you have to do is add a few washers and drill a hole in one end and they're only inch and a half difference in length for 102 bucks shipped for the all four of them These things, uh, you know the diameter, I was looking at the diameter of them. I mean, the outside hat is a little bit different from the original ones, but they're heavier. So I'm wondering if the rod that's in them is thicker. Anyhow, don't forget the four washers down there. Make sure you torque these babies down. I just can't believe they work. That was a uh, crazy gamble. Oh, one other thing. Uh, I had to make some new couplings there because the old one, after I uh, went for a drive, they tore. One of them tore, so. Or it was torn, and I just exacerbated the problem by adding some better clamps. But it made a nice whistling noise when the boost came on. That's kind of a dead giveaway that your, one of your couplings is bad. <sighs> that ate up a lot of my time driving up to driving up to Harbor Freight. So I'm calling it quits for today, guys. If you uh, like this video, give me a thumbs up, like, hit like, subscribe, and as always, I'll catch you guys next time. See you later. Bye bye.